from CBS 4 News. This is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy, and welcome to this special one hour live election edition of Facing South Florida. There are nine days left in this campaign, and more than 50 million Americans have already voted. Later in the show, we will bring you the only English language debate between Democratic Congresswoman Donna Shalala and her Republican opponent, Maria Elvira Salazar. Before we get to that, there have been some disturbing stories about foreign interference in the 2020 election. Voters in Florida and at least two other states received this disturbing email, supposedly from the notorious group The Proud Boys. The email promised violence against Democrats who vote for Biden. But according to the FBI, the Proud Boys didn't send the email. It came from the Iranians, who along with the Russians have been trying to weaponize voter registration information to sow chaos and undermine confidence in voting. This is a serious matter, and joining me live this morning from Tallahassee for her first interview since federal authorities issued their warning is Florida Secretary of State Laura Lee, who oversees Florida's election. Madam Secretary, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I'm glad we can make this work. Just want to make sure you can hear me. Thank you, Jim. It's Excellent. great to be here. All right, just a little bit of a delay, so we'll compensate for that going forward. I sure can. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. I want to play for you right now some sound that came in during when the intelligence community briefed uh, the public about the threat. This is DNI Ratcliffe, the D uh, Director of National Intelligence, John Ratcliffe. This is what he had to say on Wednesday. Let's play that sound. First, we have confirmed that some voter registration information has been obtained by Iran and separately by Russia. This data can be used by foreign actors to attempt to communicate false information to registered voters that they hope will cause confusion, sow chaos, and undermine your confidence in American democracy. Uh, Madam Secretary, when did you first become aware that Florida voter registration information had been accessed by either the Iranians or the Russians, and do we know how they obtained it? Well, first, it's important to understand that our systems are secure. What we saw last week were foreign actors who used publicly available information in an effort to mislead and intimidate voters. What Florida voters need to know is that first, our database is secure. They used publicly available information. And second, our ballot is secret. No one will ever know how a, floor, how a voter chooses to vote or who they vote for. So we want Floridians to know, first off, this is a very serious threat. Uh, and we do expect these types of actors to continue trying to interfere by using misinformation and disinformation around our elections. Anything that looks suspicious, a voter should immediately notify their supervisor of elections so that we can work with our law enforcement partners just as we did here to get to the bottom of it. Let me ask you, uh, when the FBI briefed you about this, what exactly did they tell you and, and what recommendations did the FBI have for the state of Florida in terms of securing its voter registration or other types of information that could be problematic in the future? Sure. Well, and when we saw this information, our initial impression from the beginning was that it appeared to be an, a misinformation or disinformation campaign. We work with our federal partners every day, including the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security, to be sure that we have the most up-to-date intelligence information and that we're aware of any new threats to our elections that could be emerging out there. We have worked very hard to be prepared and to bolster and strengthen our elections network and our elections infrastructure. Well, let me, let this me has just... been a key priority for Governor DeSantis, and over the last two years, 
Let me, yeah, let me just, so, ju just sort of jump in for a second, because in 2016, before you were Secretary of State, so this wasn't under your watch, at least two Florida counties were the elections departments had information stolen and Russians actually penetrated their election systems. We know that from the Mueller report and from information released through the intelligence community. What steps have been taken to make sure that intrusions like that will not happen here in 2020? What's different this time around than we saw in 2020? Back in 2019, Governor DeSantis directed me to conduct a review of our statewide elections infrastructure. We partnered with all 67 of Florida's supervisors of elections to conduct a risk assessment review in each of Florida's counties. And we've partnered with them since then to address or mitigate any vulnerabilities that have been found. We've invested millions in upgrading our election systems, our hardware, software, firewalls, and also developed a very extensive and ongoing training program so that anyone who works in the elections community knows to be on the lookout for any type of suspicious activity or attempts to penetrate our networks. We are stronger than we have ever been. Well, let me just ask you, pick up on that for a second, because, I, you know, you had made the statement earlier that manipulating vote totals is something that would be virtually impossible because of the steps that are taken by states like Florida, including keeping, you know, that, that tabulation information separate and off the Internet. But there is a lot of information that is available to sophisticated hackers, and no matter how hard a firewall you build, that may come about. So the, one of the things that I think is the biggest fear among some folks in scenarios is that somehow Russia or Iran or somebody gains access to voter registration efforts and simply deletes tens of thousands of names from the voter registration roll so that when they show up to vote on election day, they're not allowed to vote because their vote, you know, their name isn't on the list, therefore creating even more chaos. What steps are being taken to prevent that? And if that were to happen, do you have contingencies in place? Well, first off, our registration database is secure. It's important to remember that what we saw last week uh, used publicly available voter information. So we have put many steps in place and layers of defenses to try to keep that information secure from those who we know would like to access it. Uh, with respect to the plans for supervisors themselves, supervisors are prepared for many different contingencies that could occur during elections. We have backups of the registration database uh, and other ways that supervisors can ensure that even if there is some form of disruption, they will be ready to proceed and voters will be able to cast their ballots on election day. We also have the provisional ballot process, so if there is any discrepancy with the voter roll, a voter can still have their vote counted and have their voice heard. Let me, we don't have a lot of time, and I want to play for you something. President Donald Trump was in Florida on Saturday to vote. He said he voted for himself, not a big surprise, but he also made a statement about the security of, of the voting system in Florida. I want to play for you the sound of Donald Trump and what he said and get you to react to it. Let's play that now. It was a very secure vote, much more secure than when you send in a ballot, I can tell you that. Everything was perfect, very strict, right by the rules. When you send in your ballot, it could never be like that. It could never be secure like that. Is voting by mail secure? And does it make your job harder when the president throws doubt on whether or not voting by mail is secure? So every Florida voter does have three options, voting by mail, voting early, and voting in person on election day. Every one of these three systems in Florida is secure. And it's important to understand that voting by mail in Florida is not new. Uh, we have been doing this for close to 20 years in much its present form, and we have a number of important safeguards in place to ensure the integrity of the process. A voter must request a vote by mail ballot. That ballot must be signed before it is returned to the supervisor of elections office and at both of those points that information is compared to an existing voting record so we can have a high level of confidence that the ballot goes to its intended recipient and comes back from that voter as well so, so again voters who choose to vote by mail in Florida can have confidence that we have safeguards
Mm -hmm. I just want to say, but does the president make your job a little harder when he says things like that? Well, I think it's important to understand that every state is distinct. And we were fortunate here that voting by mail is something for which we have a lot of experience. Uh, it's something that we know how to do well. Our elections administrators understand it. Our voters and even our postal carriers are accustomed to addressing and being prepared for a high volume of elections mail. All right, Secretary Lee, I really appreciate your taking the time to uh, clarify some things and, and give the voters that information. Thank you, Secretary. All right, up next, the president votes in Palm Beach, as I said, and Barack Obama campaigns in Miami. We'll be right back.